Hello and welcome to my video tutorial for California Wastewater Math for the Grade 2 exam. I hope you enjoyed uh, my Grade 1 exam and I hope it helped you out if you watched it. Uh, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, this is specific for California. I can't guarantee the validity of any of the information for your Grade 2 exam. And uh, just for reference purposes, a grade 2 exam in California is the second lowest grade you can take. Uh, it goes grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 being the highest and 1 being the lowest. So what we're going to be going over today is slightly basic, but um, getting on a little more of the advanced side. Uh, instead of uh, mostly single step problems, these are kind of two step, three step, maybe four step problems. Uh, what we're going to be covering today is F to M, which F to M stands for food to microorganism ratio. <clears throat> we're going to be going over MCRT, which is mean cell residence time. And these two kind of are the ones that operators are scared of. Uh, you have nothing to worry about. These are really, really simple problems. Um, I'll explain them in a really, really good way to help you out. Uh, next, what we're going to be going over is SVI, which is sludge volume index. Then we're going to do PONS organic loading and PONS hydraulic loading. Uh, then after that we're going to be doing volatile solids reduction for our digesters. Uh, we're going to be calculating the flow through a channel. Uh, how many gallons of sludge is settling out into a primary clarifier per day. And a trickling filter organic loading. So uh, let's start. So first we're going to be doing F to M, and like I said, F to M stands for food to microorganism ratio. And food is BOD. BOD is what the bugs are going to be eating. And microorganisms are your MLVSS, your mixed liquor volatile suspended solids. That volatile means organic. Uh, anything uh, that is not organic will not volatize in a uh, muffle furnace, which is how you discover your MLVSS. And uh, the ratio specifically is how many pounds of food for every pound of microorganisms in my aeration basin. So if I have one pound of uh, bugs, how many pounds of food does that one pound of bugs get to eat? And that's what we're trying to find out with F to M. So the formula for F to M is pounds of BOD to the aerator divided by pounds of MLVSS under aeration. Uh, now before we actually start, I do want to say that um, I'm kind of, uh, I'm thinking that you guys should be able to do pounds formulas like the back of your hand. Uh, I'm not going to be doing um, pie charts or pie formulas because they're too time consuming. Uh, you should be able to knock out a pounds formula in the blink of an eye, so uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. I want to spend more time on these actual formulas so that um, you as an operator can memorize them. So first let's find the pounds of BOD to the aerator. So if we look at what we have, we have a primary effluent BOD of 190 milligrams per liter. Now you might be going, well what's this influent BOD uh, up here? You don't use that number because it's influent. This is what they're going to do on a grade 2 exam. They are going to give you a bunch of information and you don't need all of it. Uh, so I wanted to incorporate that into my video so that you can kind of pick out uh, later on down the line which ones you're actually going to use. So why we use primary effluent BOD is because that is what's going to the aeration basin. Remember it's pounds of BOD to the aerator. So if I have an influent of 250, and that influent is going into my primary clarifier, and coming out is 190, that's the food going to the bugs. We, we've, we've eliminated some of the influence, so not all of this is going to the bugs. Only 190 of it is going. So that's the number we want to use. So we're going to pull 190 milligrams per liter times 8.34 pounds per gallon times 4 MGD, 4 million gallons a day. And that should give you... 6,338 pounds of BOD. So that's the first half of the formula, pounds of BOD to the aerator. Now the second part of the formula is pounds of MLVSS, mixed liquor volatile suspended solids, under aeration. 
Now that's important right there, under aeration. Where are you aerating? Well, you're aerating in your aeration basin. Are you aerating anything in your clarifier? No, not at all. So we're not going to use this number at all. It's thrown in there to confuse you. That's what they're trying to do on this exam. They're trying to confuse you, see if you really know what you're talking about. So it's, it's MLV assess. Well, I know pounds is a concentration times 8.34 times flow, or times million gallons, which is uh, how we're going to do this. But I don't see a mixed liquor volatile suspended solids number. All I have is this MLSS number, which is 3,400 milligrams per liter. But if you look right below that, they say 80% of the mixed liquor suspended solids is volatile suspended solids. So what does that mean? That means 80% of this number is your MLVSS. So that's what we need to find out right now. So if we take this number, 3400, and multiply it by 0.8, remember, if, if I have a 1, a 1 is a whole number. Anything with a decimal, all this number is a fraction of that number. So if I have 80%, that's not 100%. 100% would be 1. So if I have 80%, it's 0.8. So if I multiply 3400 milligrams per liter times 0.8, 80%, I wind up with 2720 milligrams per liter of MLVSS. So now we have a concentration for our MLVSS. So let's figure out how many pounds of MLVSS I have under aeration. Remember, we don't need this clarifier number. So how big is my aeration basin? It's 2 million gallons. So that's going to be the number I use in the pounds formula, not flow. So if I take 2720 milligrams per liter MLVSS and multiply it by 8.34 pounds per gallon times 2 million gallons, that's the volume of my aeration basin, you should get 45,370 pounds of MLVSS under aeration. Now that's, that's important, don't forget that, under aeration. There is MLVSS in your clarifier, but they're not going to be eating any of this BOD. They're, going to be, they're only going to be eating it in the aeration basin. So that's why you have to make sure that it's only under aeration. All right, so we figured out this top part and we figured out this bottom part. Now let's throw it all together and actually solve the problem. So I have 6,338 pounds of BOD divided by 45,370 pounds of MLVSS. And that should give me an F to M of 0 0.14. Now that's a normal number. It's going to be a decimal. Uh, the reason behind that is because you, uh, you want to starve your bugs uh, so that they stay hungry and eat a lot of food. If, if you overfeed them, they're not going to eat it all. They're not going to have time to eat it all. So you have to make sure that you're starving them so that they stay active and are constantly wanting to eat so that they consume a lot of that BOD, hopefully 100% of it. Uh, but usually it's about 95, 90% of the BOD will be consumed in your aeration basin. Uh, so what is this? Th what does this number mean? This number means that for every pound of MLVSS in my aeration basin, there is 0.14 pounds of BOD. So one pound of bugs gets to eat 0.14 pounds of food. <laughs> and that's what F to M means. Um, like I said earlier, it's, it's still a simple problem. Um, it's not that labor intensive, but instead of one step, like on a grade one, we had to do three steps to figure it out, actually four, uh, once we put it all together. So it was a four-step problem instead of a one or a two-step problem. But, uh, but what was it? It was pounds. It was pounds and uh, figuring out a milligrams per liter. If you can do pounds, you can do this problem. It's just figuring out where... The hardest part for operators is figuring out, well, what do I need? What information do I need from all the information they've given me? And if you can remember these formulas the way that I've written them out, you should have no problem uh, figuring out which uh, bit of information that you need. And if you study, 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 um, you should be very confident going into the exam.